It's our last full day here in BGC. We are heading back to Denver today. I know you're probably very sad to hear that, but keep this in mind. By the time this episode airs, we're probably already packing to come back to the Philippines anyway, so no worries. But we decided that we're gonna go out with a bang. One of our viewers suggested that we go visit PetCon in Manila because they know that Colt's looking for pets. They know that Brooklyn really wants some pets. What better place to go to look at pets than PetCon? It's at the World Trade Center. It's supposed to be a really massive event. So we're hoping to get over there and take a look at some animals for both of the kids. Colt, what do you want to see there the most? So you may not already know this, but I'm looking for a crested gecko named Tofu. And I'm gonna name him Tofu. And I want to see if they have any cool like white wall uh, Harley Quinn crested geckos there. And one of the other important aspects to this is that he has never had that kind of a gecko before. So if we are gonna go that route, we need to know things like what kind of a terrarium do they need? How big does it need to be? What do they eat? What type of environment is it gonna be required? And we wanna make some connections and find some sources so that we know where to buy those things once the time is right. Let's check in with Brooklyn. All right, Brooklyn, what kind of animals are you hoping to find today? I really like cats. What about the rabbits? We've been talking about rabbits in episodes for a long yeah, time. Yeah, um, I feel like rabbits would be too high of maintenance to be able to travel with. So no more rabbits, now we're looking at cats. Obviously, we're not gonna buy any pets today. It's all about planning. But when it comes to the cat thing, in my mind, I don't know. It might be a pretty even swap, maybe even better, because maybe cats would do better here with just the occasional check-in from our Ate versus a rabbit that really needs daily attention and a whole lot more supplies like hay or straw or food or all of that stuff that rabbits apparently need. So we'll see. Hopefully, we learn more today at PetCon. I just don't know why a guinea pig isn't on the table. I feel like a guinea pig would be the easiest low maintenance, no? A guinea pig is no? kind of like a hamster, but bigger. It's like a hamster mixed with a rabbit. It's like a hamster and rabbit in the middle. It's really messy. Okay. All right, let's go pet shopping. Gotta get that grab. Hello, how are you doing? We just have about a 25 minute drive ahead of us. We're headed to the World Trade Center of Metro Manila. If you're wondering why I keep wearing a hat in every single episode, it's because I melted my hair dryer. You might have seen that in our previous episode. We are right by Hall B and we don't want to go into that one because the pet con is in conjunction with the Game Fowl Expo as well and we're not looking for any birds so we're going to try and skip that part of the expo and we're looking for Hall reptiles. D. Reptiles. reptiles! 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 We're looking for reptiles! Halls A, B, and C but I don't know where D is. It must be around the corner. You know what, let me look up this uh, follower who has been helping us out and coordinating, um, helping us coordinate our trip over to the expo and I think that she said uh, where exactly we need to go. Apparently it goes D, A, B, C. Go figure. Where's D? I don't see anything. So they said the tent. So maybe said the tent? The tent, yeah. Smells good. This is the food tent, obviously. So that's where we can have some lunch. We gotta ask somebody else. All right, they say it's in this tent. I think we found it. You actually have to pass the food to get into the pet con, the reptile tent. Why is it so smoky in here? It doesn't smell like smoke, but it's very foggy. Maybe it's from, uh, I don't know, reptile habitat, hydration, humidity, something like that. I'm still not convinced that we're in the right place. I still see a lot of birds, a lot of fowl. Cole says he sees reptiles up here, so let's follow the reptile king. I'm wondering if there's more to it than just this tent because we're already halfway through this tent and we haven't seen a whole lot of anything. Oh. Alright, maybe Colt just found something. I found some bearded dragons right here. Lots of snakes, lots of reptiles, so Colt's gonna be happy about that. And lots of pet supplies, foods, and medicines, and all that sort of thing. Haven't seen any cats or rabbits. Cat, cat! Wait, what, honey? Look at these. What? Don't tell me that you don't want one in your house. Look at that. Look at that. Cutie. 
was thinking of the mustache. Aww. You can pet if you disinfect. He's okay. very playful, so yeah. he might scratch. <laughs> okay. Looks like very sharp teeth. That could be dangerous. Wow. So are these cats for adoption? All locally rescued cats. How many do you have? Just two here today? We had like 15 yesterday, but they all got really exhausted. <laughs> so now we have two left. Exhausted, so they're just back at some other yeah. place? Okay, so they didn't get adopted yet. They're being processed online. Okay. Well, we'll hopefully they can. So they take these cats from off the street and they spay and neuter them and put them in an adoption center for us to adopt them. This isn't really the case in BGC, but apparently in most areas of Metro Manila, you can just take stray cats off the street, basically adopt them right there. Although in that case, you'd probably want to go get medical care, vaccinations, have it spayed or neutered, do all that stuff yourself. Whereas here they take care of that for you. Brooklyn's going to take a chance on touching the cat, see if she survives. Places where this cat doesn't like to be touched, like the ears or like the stomach. She's so cute. What's her name? This is Jelly. Jelly. Do they get scared of like loud noises and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Are there any like? Do you guys have any like suggestions for like if we do get one of these cats, um, like what you should like get for them? What kind of food? There's a $500 adoption fee for each one of them, which is a pretty good deal. Considering that they've already been vaccinated, spayed or neutered, and all the other medical care. Depends. Usually cats will be frightened at first, and then they'll warm up. Okay, um, let's keep looking around, but this is like really cute. Cool. He's a little baby cat, and really, they don't need to have cat other people around, but like, you need to come in and feed them. Uh, he's already litter box trained, and um, he just seems like really cute and stuff. And I think he was already um, neutered, but I don't know. We found ourselves at the end of the tent, and it has fish and also Phil. It has Phil. I still like Candle more. <laughs> he's the cutest cat I've ever seen. Wait, is it because of the name? Do you not like the name? It's because Candle is so cute and playful and already vaccinated or and already litter box trained. And unlike a little baby, he's actually five months old. Cause like, I just prefer having like a more adult cat, but like not too adult. This is a corn snake, a big red one. And I actually have seen a very small version of one of these in Africa. This guy, how old is he? This is uh, about three years old. And they usually live for about eight years, I believe, right? Eight Over years? 20 years? Over 20 years. They live for about 20 years. All right, let's put this guy back Wait, and try I and try and some carry Yeah, yeah. Your uh, sister wants to hold him. But never grab it. Only let it crawl across his hand. Oh. When he does that, just grab him with your other hand and keep playing. I don't know where you guys get it, but it's not for me. Yeah, I prefer cats. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer none. I prefer our little teacup Yorkie back in Denver. Look at these rats! They have, they have rabbits. They have Netherland Dwarf. They have Netherland Dwarf. Look behind you, Dad. Netherland Dwarf rabbits. Look at this little rat! Can I take a picture? Yeah, put one under its leg. Does it feel like you expected a rabbit to feel to hold? I guess. I've already held a rabbit before. But like I as I know like they're prey animals and like how how easy it is for them to like get injured by holding them. I kinda I get scared by holding them, so. Oh my gosh, I'm on team rabbit. I'm on team rat. You look at those rats. Yeah, look at those rats, they're so cute. Look at the little baby mice. Uh, okay. Brooklyn, if you could have any one of the animals in this booth, what would you pick? One animal. It has to be this booth? Yeah, yeah. You, you can just pick one of these. That one, that rabbit.
Nice to meet you. Love her, I love her, I love her. Do you want to just come with me while mom stays here? Okay, so now I'm trying to convince you to get back. So, come, father, come. Come, father, come. This is the beautiful angel. Her name is Jelly. Look at her. She's the cutest cat ever. She loves butt scratchers like so much. She also loves pets. Like she's like just like wants pets like all the time. Um, she's super cute and she see, she's like really calm, much calmer than uh, Candle and stuff. And she had a, she's litter box trained. She's spayed. Um, and she's uh, claw trained. I think. I think. Um, nail grooming trained and um, she's. Uh, and she has a pretty easy diet, just like fairly wet food. You can even get things like um, mats, which you can attach to like your sofas or chairs, so that if she goes on them, she's actually not scratching the furniture itself, but the mats. Yeah. You can also buy. Okay, this is a little bit hilarious, but we actually had a security guard come up to us and ask to see our tickets. We realized that we never bought tickets. We just pointed. We got pointed to the tent for the pet con and walked right in, and nobody. I don't know, I don't know. So um, yeah, we didn't get tickets, we gotta have tickets. So we're coming back outside to buy our tickets and then we're gonna go back inside. That's it, that's how easy it is, <laughs> right? <laughs> go see your snakes and uh, your dragons. All right, so tickets are inside here and there's so many points of entry. Walking tickets, there's like a couple of different lines actually. Let's pick the shortest one, maybe this one, right here. It's 250 pesos per person. Oh, but three and under, I think, is free. We're all over three, so I think we're paying a thousand pesos, which is 18 USD dollars. USD, because the D stands for dollars. Let's go pick up where we left off. I found the source of the smoke in here. Fog machine. Now Brooklyn really wants me to pet this cat, Jelly, which I'm happy to do, even though the chances that that cat will still be available for adoption by the time we are back at the end of February, probably relatively low. <laughs> She's very thin, probably getting back into tip-top shape now that she's got the care she needs. I do see some claws. It does make me nervous about furniture. For cats in general, Aaron and I are definitely going to have to have a pretty serious conversation because it sounds like tons of commitment there, but it's a cute cat. This place is an absolute zoo today. Get it? He's so sweet. One of my favorite snakes in the world is a boa constrictor, especially since a lot of them have these bright red spots towards their tail. And although they do constrict, they are naturally really, really chill towards people and humans. This guy is about five years old, um, and he is honestly really small for five years old. This is probably one of my favorite snakes that I've ever had or held in the entire world. He is so, so sweet. But he is constricting my hand. Not, not hard, just holding on to my hand. All right, I'm gonna let him back on his little tree. And hopefully, he will let go of me. Buddy, please, it's not my time. Oh, there he goes, he's letting. It's a big boy. Buddy, I know, yep, you can do it. You can let go. You can do it, buddy. I believe in you. Can you help? Yes, please. Ooh. He's not constricting, oh. but he's, he's holding on. I got it. There, buddy. Can you help me? Yeah. He wasn't constricting, but he was holding on. Now let's go look at some geckos. Little bit, you know, he 
He's a little bit sensitive, but you can hold him. Oh. It's so precious. I think it feels like a little dog or like a, a squirrel with spikes. The spikes don't even hurt. It feels like a, a, a little squirrel or a little dog with some spikes. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but a hedgehog's quills, they're actually not spikes like a porcupine. They're actually like really sharp hair. It's like fur to them. It helps keep them warm and helps keep predators away when they bite those little spikes. Okay, I'm gonna put him down. He's get out. Wow. You may not know this about me, but my dream pets are ferrets and sugar gliders out of the reptile family. And they have sugar gliders right here. Let's let's take a look at them. Oh, oh my god. They have some cockatoos right here. I've never held a dirt. Look at this guy. It's Hulk. <laughs> well, I can say that he doesn't like me very much, but that was really, really cool. I held a cockatoo. Thank you. My eyeballs help my eyeballs. I think he likes me much more than he likes. This guy right here is actually an African gray parrot. Oh, he's so fluffy. There's some really, really fluffy corgis here. Cute corgis. This is totally hectic. The kids' excitement gets them running in different directions and it's so hard to keep up with them because it's like one fun, exciting animal after the next. But we have some serious thinking and talking to do, which we're gonna do over lunch. It might be a little bit quieter. We're gonna eat at one of our new favorite places to have a little Japanese food because Japanese food is one of our favorite cuisines. Uh, this is Sakagura in the Bonifacio One Mall. The kids love this mall. And we like that we get to have some one-on-one -on -one parent time to chat and we've got a lot to chat about. To pet or not to pet? That will be the question at lunch here. I'm definitely with Aaron on the idea of no more pets, period. They really lock us down in terms of our travel abilities and that's less than ideal. Plus we have to worry about things like when we're out of town, who's going to take care of that pet, all the costs and complexities associated with feeding that pet or medical stuff, veterinary bills, all of that sort of thing. It's a huge hassle. And Colt already has pets. We haven't really promised him that he can get more here, but the deal is if he wants pets here, he would have to buy them on his own. Brooklyn, on the other hand, we've pretty much indicated that we will seriously negotiate a pet with her. And we had our hearts kind of set on a rabbit, but it does sound like those are gonna be a real hassle compared to some alternatives. Getting a pet, no matter what type or the level of attention they need, it is a huge, huge responsibility. And I just don't know if we're ready to take on that much more responsibility, especially with the travel back and forth. Because we have our oldest daughter, Reagan, who is in Denver with her mom. We have to spend 50% of our time with, so that's why we fly back to Denver so often. So getting a pet would require us to be in BGC a lot more than 50% because we'd have that added responsibility. Or of course, we have somebody locally, whether it's a friend, a neighbor, or an ate, who can take care of them while we're gone. And in any case, it needs to be something where it doesn't require daily care. So where we can put out a certain amount of food, drinks, whatever. Just like we have with Colts Reptiles back in Denver, it's very automated. We give them a lot of food right before we leave, but as far as water, the hydration system, the heat lamps and all that goes, it's completely timer-based, automatic, set it and forget it. Not really the case with rabbits in any way, shape, or form, and cats are probably just a, an incremental improvement on that. I don't know about that. I feel like I understand the reptiles and how they're in an enclosure and they have their very limited environment and they're happy with that. They don't need a whole lot of human interaction. But cats are mammals and they, they do want human interaction and if they don't, they tear your house apart. 
they scratch up your furniture like crazy. Even if you have a scratch post, I've seen houses totally torn apart because the cats don't want to be left alone. All right, well, I'm not going to be able to make any good decisions without a little bit of a sake in hand. So here's to making decisions, the right decisions. Obviously, we don't have to come up with an answer right now. Luckily, we have about a month before we're even going to be pressured into it again. You'll definitely have to subscribe so that you don't miss whatever the resolution of this is. But we're going to enjoy our lunch and then we've got to head back to our place so that we can get ready for our trip tonight. And there's a whole lot we have to figure out. We just got our place and now we're leaving so it's a lot to figure out what we take, what we don't take, and things we need to do to prepare the apartment for us to be gone for a month. Let's go. It's my least favorite part of travel, I think, is packing, unpacking to a lesser degree. Erin loves it <laughs> for some reason. She packs Brooklyn and Colt also. I only have to pack myself, although in my defense, I have to pack a lot more because I'm the one responsible for all of the equipment. So I've got things like this, waterproof case. This one holds the camera, lens, spare batteries, a lot of other things. But right now, because I carry the really expensive camera equipment on the plane with me so it doesn't get lost, I just pack this one with secondary supplies. But I have another one of these, drone. Again, these are important because they're completely waterproof. So a lot of the stuff that we do, we're heading into the jungle, fully submerged, diving from a boat to land, things where everything would get completely soaked. And um, between us, has many times, but this keeps stuff completely dry. So this is lessons learned, basically. I haven't done any laundry. All my dirty laundry's right over there. I have to start packing. We're gonna try to leave as much stuff as possible here in BGC so that we don't have to bring more back and forth. Also, it'll mean fewer bags that we have to take back to the US with us right now. And then on the way back, we can actually pack those things, those suitcases full of all the other stuff that we wanna bring with us. We have a massive, massive list of things that we wanna bring back from Denver. Some of those are things that we already have at our home that we wanna bring out here. Other things, whatever things we feel like we need to buy in the US to bring back with us. Uh, but we do wanna make sure that we have plenty of suitcases because we might be flying back with the equivalent of two or three suitcases and coming back with six or eight. I actually have a plan and I have no idea if it's gonna work. So I brought out these two ginormous suitcases and the kids each have a small carry-on bag. So I'm gonna see if I can fit their suitcases inside these suitcases. We'll find out. All right, Brooklyn, I gotta go get theirs. Yes. Cole, bud, I need your suitcase. I think it's in here. This one? Yes, good job, it's in here. All right, let's see if my plan works. I think this will work if I don't, you know, wanna zip that up. It totally works! <laughs> That's what we're doing then. So I'm actually gonna put a few things because I'm not taking much back. Brooklyn only wants to take back some shoes. And uh, I'm gonna fill that with in the small suitcase and then just put that in there. Yeah, and then we can take a ton of stuff from Denver to bring back to BGC. Have you guys seen my hat? I designed this. It's inspired by the American flag and the Filipino flag to represent the very special relationship that America and the Philippines has, and our family with Philippines. Um, a lot of people, not a lot of people, some people think that this is problematic and it's a violation of certain Philippines laws surrounding their flag. It's not, I've looked into this, and here's the key. This is why, by the way, when you fly Philippines Airlines or you go to any number of other businesses around here, you'll see elements of the Philippines flag, uh, but they're allowed to do that because all I have is a white area, the, the triangle right here that has the yellow stars, and then I have a red triangle down here. And those are elements that were inspired by the Philippines flag, obviously, and then I did the same thing for the American flag. And by the way, the United States has similar laws in terms of their flags and usage, but because these aren't actual flags for either country and what they actually are are elements that I have incorporated into my own design, it's 100% legal in both countries, and we do sell these on our website, but uh, depending on where you live, I don't know if I would recommend going and getting them just yet, because I think that as these are fulfilled by our fulfillment center, it can be maybe a little bit cost prohibitive, especially in the Philippines, to get one of these. If you're in the US or Europe, it's probably a whole lot more affordable. 
Uh, but what I'm gonna do is work with a company in the Philippines here to print a bunch of these in bulk. And then if you wanna buy them and have them shipped somewhere in the Philippines, we'll be able to do it very economically. I think more economically than through the other parts of our website. Well, let me show you one other really cool thing. We were in Malaysia recently, and I, once again, this is the third time I broke my coccyx, which is your tailbone. I did that when we were going through a cave and we were going down a slide, and because I was holding camera equipment, I couldn't really control the speed at which I was sliding down the rocks. Big bump, big break. Once again, I have a coccyx that is broken. The last time this happened, it took about 10 years to heal. They're notoriously bad for healing times. I haven't done much about it other than complain a lot and hope that it just goes away. But when we got out here and we went over to the Ocampo's house, mom duty, they pulled out a bag, two different seat cushions for tailbones. It is so painful for me to fly on airplanes and do any number of other things, but on airplanes it's problematic because sometimes we're on a plane for up to 16 hours straight with a broken tailbone. That is excruciating. And so they got me these things and I sat on them in their apartment. And at least one of these was absolutely incredible. So I'm gonna sit on them again today to figure out which one I like best. And I'm gonna take this on our trip home because we have like a full day of travel on the way home. But that's the kind of people the Ocampos are. I didn't buy this for myself. My wife loves me and she's awesome. <laughs> she didn't buy me these, but the Ocampos bought me two. I don't care how it looks or what people think, this is a game changer. While I fold some laundry to pack up and put away, I want to tell you what to expect for episodes from us. So on our Always Be Changing, our parent channel, where we post international family travel, we have probably already posted our first Palawan episode. We have four total, and we're posting them on Always Be Changing first. And once we're done there, then I'm going to put it together in a compilation video and post it over here on LTP. We are going to post it. But when we're back in Denver, we are not going to take a break from posting here as well. We're gonna have live, we're gonna have Q&A, we're gonna do some cooking Filipino food in our Denver kitchen. So please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you see every single episode when it launches and keep following us along. It is absolutely crazy to think about how quickly these four weeks went by. And a lot of that is because of the fact that we spent the first three weeks at the Shangri-La, the fort, which, I mean, I have great memories of. But the stuff that we have accomplished in that period of time, the people that we've met in that period of time, this has absolutely flown by. It's just like an absolute whirlwind, and I don't think any of us, frankly, are really ready to go right now. But we do have Reagan back home, and we're very excited to see her tomorrow. And let's talk about episodes. Like, we have launched one more episode on Always Be Changing. We have launched 10 episodes just on this channel, Live the Philippines, and we set up a brand new channel for Cole, launched two episodes and a short on his channel, and we still have two more episodes in the can for him and all the other episodes in the can for our channel. We have so much content to share with you guys in the coming weeks, and we can't wait to get it out there, and we can't wait to come back. In the meantime, we are gonna finish packing, we are gonna get around, we're gonna head to the airport, we're gonna get out of here, and we're gonna be counting down the days until we get back here at the end of February. So we will see you in the next episode on all three channels.